Hello everybody, welcome back. Recently, I used the community tab for once, asking what types of videos or recipes you'd like to see on here next. And I think the most upvoted or liked comment was this one by Anna. Fancy meals for the average cook. So that's what we're gonna be doing here today. This video features four super, super yummy, easy to make meals for, I don't know, maybe a date night, cooking with friends, or just in general to impress someone who's maybe a bit picky when it comes to vegan food. This first recipe must be the most fish-like meal I've ever made on here. This is some in dill and lemon marinated tempeh, heavily inspired by one of Troy Savan's Instagram stories. First things first, cut up two blocks of plain tempeh. I got these from the organic store. You can usually find it in the chilled section where the tofu is. These little soy cakes make for an amazing fish substitute. They're rich in protein, and just like flax seeds, chia seeds, or walnuts, they're a great source of omega-3. Cut the blocks lengthwise first, and then into any smaller shape you prefer. I decided to go for triangles, or whatever this is. Now in order to get rid of the slight bitterness that tempeh oftentimes has, we're going to steam it first. So add all those pieces to a saucepan or skillet, maybe perhaps one that's slightly bigger than mine. Add about a half a cup of water and bring the heat up to medium high, letting it steam through for 15 to 20 minutes. Make sure to use a lid that has a hole or just use a regular lid and put it on halfway. If the water evaporates too quickly over time, then just add some more here and there. In the meantime, mix together all the ingredients for the marinade. Lemon zest and lemon juice. I only did a lemon and a half for both, but feel free to do the whole two lemons like Troy suggested. Lots of dill, heaps of salt, my most favorite Australian expression, um, and also some sumac, which is this tart fruity spice. You can substitute this with a little bit of lemon pepper or rase hanout, or just skip it completely. I couldn't find my paprika powder, so I just ended up using some fry seasoning since that has paprika as the second ingredient listed. I added some chili flakes and then some olive oil and a tiny bit of water. Kiss me, little Take me We're gonna be treating this sort of like a lasagna um, to a medium-sized casserole dish or even like a brownie pan would work. Add a sheet of seaweed. I went for some roasted Korean seaweed called gim. It's so, so good. Then add a layer of tempeh, about half of the marinade, then another sheet of seaweed, another layer of tempeh, and lastly, the rest of the marinade. Serve the tempeh with whatever you like. I think oven roasted potatoes work really nice here, so I'm quickly prepping some of those. Just like I did in my Twilight video, rubbing each potato with some olive oil, seasoning it with some fry seasoning, wrapping it up in foil, and then placing it on a baking sheet that is gonna go into the preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius. Let the potatoes bake for about 15 minutes before adding the tempeh right next to them. Let everything roast for another 30 minutes or so until the potatoes are tender and then serve it up. Doesn't this also kind of look like fish? Like if you were squinting your eyes, like a lot? When it comes to arranging fancy looking plates, I would say less is always more. <laughs> Lemon slices are always appreciated, and also adding little things like a sprinkle of cress, chopped parsley, spring onion, or, or roasted, se roasted sesame seeds just makes everything look so much more put together. If you can't find vegan sour cream or cream cheese, try some store-bought plain hummus, or whip up some more of that lemon dressing, maybe minus the dill, and drizzle that over everything. I'm not exactly sure that this next idea can be considered the fanciest of all possible plant-based meals, but it involves homemade vegan pizza cheese. So I think it still deserves to be in this video. We're gonna be making our own pizza baguettes. To a small saucepan, the heat turned off at this point, add some tapioca starch. Tapioca can be found at pretty much any Asian food store, perhaps also at your local organic store. Combine the starch with some water. Then, once the starch has been fully incorporated and there's no clumps left, you're going to add some soy cream, some nutritional yeast, turmeric for the color, salt, a bit of miso paste, some white wine vinegar, and also other spices such as onion, garlic powder, perhaps also some paprika. Now turn the heat to medium high. Let it cook for two to three minutes before taking it off the heat. Taste test and adjust anything if needed. Yeah, make sure to season it very well. Next, cut up your baguette. This sauce makes enough for four halves that are 15 to 18 centimeters long. Spread each one with your favorite store-bought pizza or pasta sauce. 
or make your own marinara if you're up for it i will link uh, a recipe for that down below top it off with whatever you like i went for cherry tomatoes spinach and spring onion then i carefully placed each baguette onto the baking sheet um i could have also just assembled everything on the parchment paper in the first place and that's it these are really really good obviously the homemade cheese mix won't exactly taste like regular cheese but it's still super yummy especially in combination with the bread and the sauce and everything if you want a more authentic cheese taste then feel free to add a handful of vegan cheese to the sauce earlier it might seem redundant to do that but it works super well for idea number three we'll be making some salad that perhaps even people who don't like salads can enjoy first off prepare some rice paper bacon following the recipe that I shared not too long ago in a Harry Potter themed food video. I will link that one down below, but here's a quick rundown anyway. Um, Preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius and line a baking sheet with parchment paper. To some smoky vegan barbecue sauce, add some oil, white wine vinegar and mustard. Mix this until well combined, then set it aside. Grab a couple rice paper sheets, add each one to a plate filled with water for about 15 seconds, um, one after the other, not, as, not at the same time. Lay the sheet out on a cutting board and cut it into strips that are about four centimeters wide. If you're not able to cut through the rice paper yet, let it rest on the cutting board for another maybe 10 seconds and then it should be soft enough. Place each strip on the baking sheet, brush them with a barbecue marinade, Make sure to reserve about two tablespoons of that sauce and then let the rice paper bake for eight to 10 minutes. Cook up some couscous next. Bring the water up to a boil along with some salt and a teaspoon of olive oil. Quickly mix in the couscous. Take the pan off the heat and place a lid on top allowing the couscous to steam through and absorb all the water. Almost burned my fake bacon there. Let it rest and crisp up on the counter for a couple minutes while you combine the ingredients for the dressing and chop up your vegetables. To the reserved two tablespoons of barbecue marinade, add some vegan sour cream or thick unsweetened vegan yogurt, some vegan mayonnaise, white wine vinegar, and mix it all up. Taste test it and adjust anything if necessary. And then it's time to assemble the salad. I put together just one big salad platter, but feel free to make multiple smaller ones. Add the couscous first, then add your greens. I went for a mix between spinach and arugula, then the cherry tomato halves. Yeah, then add the rice paper bacon. I broke it into bits before carefully placing it on there. This is actually really fun, assembling this, trying really hard to make it look pretty. This sauce, this dressing, mm. It tastes really nice with the pizza baguettes that we made just now. Yeah, this was this was truly, truly tasty. Recipe number four is also an exciting one. I was trying to recreate one of my favorite meals from when I was a kid. It's a cheesy pasta bake with smoked tofu working as our ham substitute here. Chop up half a block of smoked tofu, an onion, and a clove of garlic. Add some oil to a skillet and bring it to medium heat. Once hot, add the tofu and onion first, letting them saute for about five minutes. Then mix in the garlic, letting this cook for another two minutes or so. Next up, pour in some white wine. That is a pretty essential ingredient in this. It can be substituted for veggie broth, but it's gonna taste better with the wine. I bet some alcohol-free wine would also work because we're basically gonna let the, the alcohol evaporate anyway. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Bring a pot with salted water up to a boil and add your shortcut pasta. Cook the pasta for about two minutes less than what is written on the packaging. Now we're gonna be making almost the exact same cheese sauce we've made for the pizza, but mixing together the ingredients on a kitchen surface this time instead of the stovetop. Um, so let the starch dissolve in the water, add all the remaining ingredients. Next to the soy cream, I'd also added some oat milk here. Bring this up to a boil, stirring thoroughly until it's all thickened up. 
Towards the end, I also mixed in a handful of vegan cheese, just to give it more of a real cheese type flavor, but that can of course be skipped. Add the tofu and onion to the sauce as well. Grab your casserole dish. This could have been a beautiful shot. Sprinkle everything with some breadcrumbs. I made these myself a bit earlier, just by toasting up some old white bread until super crispy for like 15 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. And then I let the bread rest on the counter for like 20 to 30 minutes until completely cooled and hardened. I challenged myself to make this video without a food processor for once. So I put the, the toasts inside a plastic bag, crushing them with all my might and a, and a small bowl. And then I sifted out the larger chunks. Let this bake for 20 to 25 minutes. For the last two to three minutes, I had the heat on high, like 250 degrees Celsius. But that is an optional step. Definitely keep an eye on your pasta bake and your oven in general. Again, we've got some cress here. I also had some rice paper bacon bits left that I just added here as well. This was so good. I seriously don't know what my favorite recipe is from this video. It's an impossible choice. You gotta try them yourself sometime. Definitely tag me on Instagram if you post photos of your recreations. I can't wait to see those. Um, yeah, thanks thanks so much for being here. Um, and I will, I will talk to you soon. Have a good week. Bye. Oh.